What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and in addition to iOS 14, iPadOS 14, and watchOS 7, Apple also just released the first developer beta of macOS 11, Big Sur. So in this video, we're gonna go over more than 55 new features and changes found in this completely redesigned software. And right off the bat, I'll tell you guys that I think this is the biggest update visually to macOS ever. So that means we have a lot to cover in this video. So let's not waste any time. Let's just go ahead and get into it. So right after installing Big Sur, you'll probably notice the brand new translucent top bar all the way up at the very top. It looks a lot cleaner here in this new update. You can see that all the icons are a little bit smaller. And then over here on the right, we have the control center, which is actually called the menu bar here in macOS Big Sur. But as you can see, it's pretty much just like the control center that we get on iOS and iPad OS. And from here, you can change your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, your AirDrop, you have little sliders here for your display brightness and your sound. You have do not disturb, your keyboard brightness, your airplay, and then you have your now playing down there at the bottom. And if you click on something like your Wi-Fi right here, you can see you get these different preferences. And then you just tap on the control center icon again to go back to where you just were, which is pretty neat. And it's nice to be able to access all that from the top menu bar. Now, also, if you click on the date up in the top bar, that now brings up the redesigned notification center and widgets. So we have the all new widgets down here, just like we see on iOS and macOS. And of course, we tap on edit widgets. This is where you can add in new widgets and move them around and everything like that. It's very similar to what we see on iOS and macOS. We have the different sizes here, small, medium, large. Unfortunately, you do not get the smart stack on macOS like you do on iOS and iPadOS, which is a little bit weird. I don't know why we wouldn't have that but you can go ahead and add them in there and move them around like so which could be pretty convenient if you go in here a lot and then also you'll see that we have notification stacking right here in our notification center and also if we click and hold on a notification like you can see here with messages i get some additional prompts and things we can do from here so we can mark as red and reply straight from the notification center right here and then you have these three dots here where you can change the notification settings right here to deliver quietly or just to turn off those notifications we also have the battery indicator in the top bar right here and it's going to show you how much time remaining you have on a charge and also how long it's going to take to fill up your battery when you are charging. We also have a new Wi-Fi toggle here and you can see it looks a lot different and a lot more modern and more like iOS than previous versions of Mac OS. I like how it shows just your preferred network right there. And if you wanna see all the other random names of Wi-Fi, you have to click on other networks. So it just makes it a lot more clean of an interface. And you can also go to your network preferences from here if you need to. Also in the AirPlay settings up here in the top bar, you can see we now get icons for each individual device over here. So like for our TV and our iPads and things like that, we now get a little glyph over here on the left side of those. You can also quickly go to your sidecar preferences from the AirPlay icon here in the top bar. You'll also notice that the Siri icon is a little bit smaller in the top bar than it was on previous versions of Mac OS. And Siri itself is also smarter now in Mac OS 11. So it's gonna be able to answer more complex questions and search more of the web and things like that, just like in iOS and Mac OS. And speaking of new and improved, the spotlight search has also been improved here in Mac OS 11 Big Sur. So it's now been improved to search basically more locations on your actual operating system on your Mac itself and also on the web. So when you search things, it's gonna search a lot more in depth than it did on past versions of Mac OS. Now moving on down to the bottom, you can see that we have all new icons down in the dock. So we have this more squared off design now for all of the default apps in Mac OS Big Sur. And I'm a fan of it. I wasn't really a fan of it at first. I did like the circular icons, but I think I like the square now just because it's more uniformed with iOS and Mac OS. However, some of these are just straight up ugly. Like the QuickTime player is ugly. Apple needs to fix that one. And a couple of these are just kind of strange. Messages looks a little bit too green. Same with FaceTime, I don't know. Some of these could be changed, but I do like the squared off design, the more squared off design than the circle design. Now we also have some new sounds in Mac OS 11 Big Sur. So for instance, if I go ahead and drag something onto the desktop, take a listen to this new sound. And then if I were to put it in the trash can, those are both new sounds. If I were to empty the trash can, so you can hear all of those are brand new sounds in Big Sur. And one sound that you guys have probably been waiting on to return is the startup chime. It is officially back. So if you go into your system preferences and go to sound, you can see right here up top, we have play sound on startup. So now we have the classic macOS chime 
when we start up the Mac, finally. We also got some nice new changes to the Finder here in Big Sur. So you'll see we have the new sidebar over here on the left-hand side, which you will notice the same sidebar look throughout multiple default applications in Mac OS 11, like the notes, the mail, the contacts. We'll go through those later, but we have that same translucent looking sidebar with the blue colored glyphs, which looks really, really good and a lot better than the gray glyphs that we saw in Catalina. We also have a new location for the arrows right here and it shows you know, the folder we're in right here instead of being all the way up top. Then we have the different look for all of our settings right here for our filtering and everything like that. It just looks a lot cleaner and more condensed. It doesn't look as cluttered as it did in Catalina. And especially because when we have to go to search, when we go to search, you have to click on that to show the little search field right there and type it in. Whereas in Catalina, it was just a big, long search bar over there on the right hand side. Also, if we go to our finder preferences right here, you will see some changes right here. So you'll notice how the menu items are centered now instead of aligned left. And then also we have those same much cleaner looking glyphs, much more modern looking glyphs than Catalina. We also get some nice changes inside of the messages application. So first off, once again, we have that new icon for messages down in the dock. And then when we open up messages, you'll see some major changes to this on Mac OS, and it looks a lot more like iOS and iPad OS now. So first off, we can pin conversations just like we can in iOS and iPad OS. We also get the inline replies in group chats. We can also you know, set photos for a group chat and everything like that. But also in Mac OS, we can now have access to applications right here. And you can see we can actually add images. We could do emoji stickers, photos, message effects as well. So both images, message effects, and emojis are all new for Mac OS. We could never do that in the past. So now you can send an image straight from Mac OS, just like you could on iOS. And once again, we do have message effects as well. So I'll go ahead and type in a message right here. I'll just say hi, and then go to message effects. And then I'll do that with love and send. And you can see there, I sent that message with love and it shows up here right on the Mac. And of course that will show up on the iPhone or iPad of the person you sent this to. Now the search and messages has also greatly improved here in Big Sur. So you can see here, right once you tap on search, you'll notice a huge difference. And once again, it's just really more like iOS and iPad OS now, whereas in previous versions of Mac OS, it was almost like it was its own application. Like it wasn't really unified with you know, iMessage in general. So now it's more like iMessage. I can actually see myself using my Mac to text others now, whereas I really never wanted to at all in the past. Also, if we go to the preferences for messages, you will see some nice changes here as well. Once again, you could set your profile picture here. You could set your name. You have the share name and photo, share automatically. We have all these new options you can change just like in iOS. So now let's move on to Safari, which also gets a massive update here in Mac OS 11. So starting off, with the start page when you first open up Safari. If you right click, you'll see that you can now choose a background for this starting page. So let's go ahead and set it to, I don't know, something like this and take a look at that. We have a new image here as our background for the starting page. If we close out and reopen up Safari, you'll see that it remains there until you change it again. You'll also notice that the buttons are adjusted a little bit up in the top bar right here. So the previous and back are now on the right side of the sidebar right here, whereas in macOS Catalina, they were on the left side of it. You'll also notice on the right-hand side that the open new tab button is in between share and the tab view, whereas before it was like way over here off on the right. We also have the new privacy tracking feature, just like we get in iOS and iPadOS. So this is to the left of the address bar right here. If you click on that when you're on a website, it'll show right here ESPN.com had 25 trackers that were prevented. If you click this little drop down right here, it shows trackers on this web page, and it'll show you all the trackers from that page. Now, if you click on the I, it'll show you even more information. So it says Safari prevents trackers from following you across websites. Then it shows in the last 30 days, I had 59 known trackers prevented, 83% of websites that contacted trackers, and then the most contacted tracker was doubleclick.net, and that's likely just because I do not have Adblocker installed, and most of these sites serve ads. But you have websites right here, and then you also have trackers right here that show you know how many times they've shown up and things like that, which is pretty cool if you want to see you know who's tracking you more than other websites. Now we also have translation built in to Safari now in macOS 11 Big Sur. So when you go on a website that is not in your native language, you'll see this up in the top right of the address bar. So it's a little translation bubble. If you tap on that and go to translate to English, it will translate it right away once you enable the translation. 
and you will see that it translates it pretty accurately here across the website. So that is definitely a nice feature to have right here. You can view original if you click on it again and also set your preferred language, which is inside of system preferences and in language and region. So now when you go to search on a page, so when you command F and you go to search for something, so say I wanna search for Tesla, you can see here you get different options. So it shows one of 26 matches for contains, but you can also change it to begins with as well. So you have this right here now in Mac OS 11 Big Sur. And you'll notice that if we open up multiple tabs, we now have the favicons in the tab view right here. So we can see the little favicon icon for each individual website in the tab view here, which is really nice to see. And it doesn't end there. If you hover over that tab, you can see a little preview of the website or whatever you have opened up in that tab, which is pretty neat. And then finally, Apple also claims that Safari, of course, is faster and more optimized in Big Sur. They claim that this new updated Safari Safari is 50% faster than Chrome when loading frequently visited websites and it gets you one hour longer of battery life while browsing compared to Chrome and three hours longer of battery life when streaming video compared to Google Chrome. Now, speaking of Safari, if we go into the App Store here, you'll notice that we have a new section in the App Store for Safari extensions. You can see it right there, and this will show you all of the extensions available inside of Safari. It's now built into the App Store, which is really nice. Now, jumping into Mail, we also got some nice improvements to Mail here in Mac OS 11 Big Sur. So first of all, of course, we have the new sidebar over here on the left-hand side, that translucent sidebar. We also get the new glyphs on the left-hand side of inbox and sent and everything over here. And then once again, the top where all the menu items are, the filtering, the create new message, all these things right here are just a lot cleaner looking. It looks a lot cleaner than it did in Catalina where once again, it just looked very overwhelming and there was just a lot up there. And I really like how the search bar, it's such a small thing, but the search bar right here, you have to click on it first before expanding it. And it doesn't take up as much room in this top bar of mail right here, which is again, a small thing, but it's just a great UI element to have. We also get some small but welcome changes to the photos application here in Big Sur. You can see we have the sidebar, of course, over here on the left-hand side. We have the new glyphs over here, the blue glyphs, which look really clean. And then also we have a little bit of a difference here in the zoom icon. So we have a minus and a plus compared to like a smaller person and a bigger person in a frame like it was in Catalina. Also inside of the music application, we get these same improvements that we got on iOS and iPadOS. So we have the For You tab right here being renamed to Listen Now, and it gives you a lot better picks and a lot better playlist suggestions here on the front page. And of course we have the sidebar and those new glyphs over here on the left-hand side. Also, if we go into Preferences, we have some new glyphs up top right here, some new icons. The main one that looks real different is Restriction. So before it had like a parent and a kid, now it just has this circle with the line through it for restrictions, a lot cleaner looking. And of course it's all red now, as opposed to blue or whatever color you set in the past. It's now dynamic. We also get some small improvements to the reminders application. So you can now assign reminders to people that you share lists with, and they will get a notification when you send them that reminder. And then we also get smart suggestions for dates and locations. So basically if you, you know, set a reminder, if you put in like haircut or something like that, you will get a suggested date and time based on past reminders that you've set. And then also just like everything else in Mac OS, iOS, and iPad OS, we have improved search in the Reminders app. In the Voice Memos application, we can now add folders. So if you go ahead and click down there in the bottom right, and then just enter in a name for the folder, you can have that added right there. You can also mark recordings as favorites. And then also we have enhanced audio recording that basically will just reduce background noise and reverb in the room and allow for much cleaner recordings. Also in the Maps application, we now get cycling directions and routes. We also get the new look around feature. We get EV routing, we get indoor maps, we get guides, pretty much everything that we saw on iOS and iPadOS, we get here with the latest version of macOS. So for example, if I went to the Hartsfield-Jackson Airport in Atlanta, if I click these little three dots right here, you can see I can start a new guide and I can save this to the guide, which is a brand new feature here in iOS 14, iPadOS 14, and macOS Big Sur. We can also, once again, like I said, add directions for cycling. So we have these cycling directions right there that will take an awfully long time, but you can do that from the maps application on your Mac. And then, like I said, we have the indoor maps as well. If you wanted to see indoors of like a shopping center, a shopping mall or something like that. In the notes application, of course, we get that new sidebar with the new glyphs over on the left-hand side, but we also get a darker interface now. So it's not more of a dark gray, it's more of like a true black now 
when you're writing notes. We also have the much better looking glyphs up top right here and the search built in right here. And you can see that before you even start typing, we get suggested searches. And if I go ahead and type something in, you can see we get top hits over here, which was not there before. And the search results are just a lot more accurate than they were previously. And now if we go into our system preferences right here, there are quite a few changes in here as well. First off, you'll notice quite a few different icons throughout the system preferences right here. And the first one you'll probably notice that's new right here is battery. And this used to be energy saver. It's now called battery. And do not ask me about that icon. That is absolutely terrible. Looks straight from 2004, but hopefully that will get fixed with these new betas that come out and hopefully definitely before the final release because that's just hideous. It looks similar to the QuickTime player icon, which I am just not a big fan of. But anyways, here you can see your usage history over the last 24 hours or last 10 days, just like you can on your Mac or your iPad. And then you have your battery settings down here as well. You have power adapter, and then you have schedule, all those within the battery settings right here. And if we go into the general section right here, you'll notice that we have the new accent color right there for multicolor and same with the highlight color that is set to the accent color right there as well. And then if we go back, you'll see that we also now have dock and menu bar. So this used to be just dock, but now it is dock and menu bar and here's where you can adjust that control center right up here in the top right of your screen. This is where you can add things in there. If you want to you know, add things or take them out, you can do that. Also, if we go into accessibility right here, you'll notice that we have a new icon for voiceover, just like we do in iOS and iPadOS. And also a lot of these icons inside of accessibility have changed as well. They look different than they did in Catalina. And then finally, software updates will now start downloading in the background and complete faster from here on out. So now that we are on Big Sur, our software updates are going to be better in terms of being faster to download, download in the background and install quicker than past versions of Mac OS, which we'll see how that is. We'll see just how much faster that is, but that is what Apple is claiming comes with Big Sur. So yeah, there you have it guys. Those are over 55 new features and changes found in Mac OS 11 Big Sur. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up and of course subscribe as I will be covering Big Sur in future videos as well as I find more new features and changes and I'll talk about the stability and everything over time. And also if you guys missed my iOS, iPad OS or watch OS videos, I will leave those linked up in the cards and down in the description below. You definitely don't want to miss those. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.